Well, you saw the top of the news where the finance minister rolled out some new numbers about the state of the country's books. Not good is the bottom line, but who to believe with the blame game in full swing? And what does it mean for Bill Morneau's first budget one month away from today? Time for a special Monday night mini at issue. Chantel's in Montreal. Andrew is here in Toronto. Andrew, why don't you start us off with a, a quick review of what you witnessed today? Well, I think what we saw was uh, an attempt to get over the problem of a sticker shock of maybe a $30 billion deficit, if that's what we're headed for, by doing it in two slices. So you do the first 18 or 20 billion, whatever it is, uh, and, you, and you make the case, well, this isn't really our fault. This is the economy. We're, this is what we were saddled with. And you hope that the next $10 billion uh, won't seem that, that bad to people. And there may be some substance in that. Probably most of what this deficit that they announced today probably is to do with the economy. Some of it's due to their own measures. I guess the only question is, why do you need to then push it all the way to 30? All right, uh, Chantel, you were actually in the room. You chose to go down and, and watch Bill Morneau give this town yes, hall, there, we called it. <laughs> what did you make of it? Well, and there were almost or as many of us covering as there were people attending the town hall. So I think it, it was made bigger by the necessity of a stage for the finance minister. I wasn't surprised that the deficit uh, number had changed. In uh, previous governments or in other places, we would have seen today as the setup to say we're going to have to dump some campaign promises because look how bad the books are. I got the uh, opposite impression, as I understand Andrew did, which uh, basically is uh, this is where we're starting off, but we've made promises. We believe the thing to do is to keep them because the economy needs stimulus. So when you see that 30 billion odd deficit uh, in a month, know that we started off at 18 billion. So what, what does it mean then in, in terms of that budget a month from now? Does it mean that uh, things will just go ahead as promised in the campaign? You don't expect to see any change there? Not the dramatic change. I don't expect the, uh, because we, we get, got no hints of that. It went the other way today. I don't expect the budget to suddenly become a restraint budget or an austerity budget. I, I, I think this government is committed to the idea that it's going to provide stimulus for the economy. I also think they're giving themselves a year to try to figure out a more substantial strategy than just implementing the platform, which actually is not going to necessarily do a lot for the economy. Because when he was asked directly, how are you going to bring the budget back to balance, he didn't have an answer. He didn't say anything. He didn't really answer many questions. Mm -hmm. uh, it was mostly just repeating the same talking points uh, over and over. They're certainly doubling down, I guess you could say, on their initial uh, strategy, if you can call it that. Uh, you know, that uh, the $10 billion deficit was supposed to be the cure for what ails us. We now have a $20 billion, and they're going to add another $10 billion uh, on top of that. Uh, so we know that they're not going to back away from that, or certainly seems to be that they're not going to back away from that. Um, but as I say, I think the question's going to be, uh, is this trip necessary? We're, we're not in recession. Uh, demand stimulus is not typically the appropriate response to a supply shock, which is what we've gone through with the oil price collapse. So it's really kind of the wrong solution to, a, to the wrong problem. Uh, and mostly it just seems that they're determined to spend this money because they've decided that infrastructure is where it's at. And well, they they've also, it. They've also made promises to, you know, First Nations to go down the list. So the notion that they would say the deficit is too high, so we're dumping our platform yeah. uh, is almost politically impossible to imagine. The other point I think that matters is if someone else had been elected last October, Thomas Mulcair or Stephen Harper, uh, their finance minister would also be eating some crow this month because both of those parties had promised to deliver on commitments and balance the books. All right. Um, let me just pick up quickly on Alan, or er, on Alan. Boy, there's a name from the past. <laughs> on Andrew's point about, um, uh, you know, not answering many questions, one he did directly answer was they wouldn't be raising any taxes. And the idea of a consumption tax, they wouldn't be raising, you know, they wouldn't be looking once again at the GST as a solution to some of all this. Um, this year. Pardon me? This year. This year, yeah. <laughs> he didn't but, say that, but I'm no, just adding. No, he didn't. This but year. If there was ever going to be a year, this would be the year to do it. I mean, the closer you get to an election, the less likely that'll... Uh, that'll ever be. Now, you've mentioned Stephen Harper and uh, basically the Conservatives and Tom Mulcair. It was interesting watching question period because the Conservatives led on the topic but didn't stay with it and the NDP didn't touch it at all. What should we make of that? 
Well, certainly the NDP thing was very interesting. That the party that proclaimed it was undyingly de devoted to fiscal discipline and balanced budgets, to the surprise, I think, of many New Democrats during the election campaign, um, yeah, picked it up and dropped it. Uh, in fact, most of their questions were, why aren't you spending more? The Conservatives, I think, will continue to re will return to this because their narrative is, it's only partially true, but their narrative is this is all a result of liberal spending. Um, so we'll certainly be hearing more of that. But this was a way to try and tamp down. As long as the Conservatives could, could hurl these questions at Morneau in, in Parliament of how big is the deficit going to be, and he couldn't answer it, they could keep that narrative going. This allows them to, to take some of the sting out of that, at least until Budget Day. All right, you get the last word, Chantel. Uh, I don't think that you will be reminded of Mr. Mulcair's promise of a balanced uh, uh, budget uh, every year of an NDP mandate. If he were in power and set to keep that promise, he would be announcing deep, deep cuts this week. All right. We'll leave it at that for now. We've got four weeks to talk about it before the budget. Andrew, uh, here in Toronto, Chantel in Montreal. And by the way, we want your questions for a special edition of At Issue. We'll all be in Vancouver next week. For the first minister's meeting and as they meet on the future of the country we want your questions on climate change on the economy on indigenous issues and more you can email us at the national at cbc.ca or post to our facebook page or tweet us using the hashtag at issue